Tonight, as usual, the Herald Tribune syndicated columnist will be checking stories live and unrehearsed with names that make news. We'll talk with veteran band leader Ted Lewis, Egyptian dancer Nedula Ace, the unidentified author of a shocking book titled I Was a Dope Addict, and to get right into action immediately with the most controversial entertainer of the year, well, you'll hear who. Hi, mm. I have Elvis Presley on the phone. Hello. Hello. Hello, Elvis. Just one moment. Hello, Elvis. Hello. Did you have fun tonight on the Steve Allen show? Yes, sir. I really did. I really enjoyed it. First time you ever worked in uh, Tux or Tails? Uh, it's the first time I ever had one on, period. You mean uh, you've got, as they say, four Cadillacs, but no tuxedos? No tuxedo. I usually drive the Cadillacs in blue jeans. <laughs> That's very interesting, particularly when a cop stops you and wants to know if you own the car, huh? That's right. You have to show them all, all your ownership papers and everything. You know, uh, less than two years ago, you were earning $14 a week as a movie usher and then $35 a week for driving a truck in Memphis. Today, you're the most controversial name in show business. Has this uh, sudden notoriety affected your sleep, your appetite, or the size of your head? Uh, not the size of my head. Uh, it's affected my sleep. How much sleep do you get? Well, I average about four or five hours a night, I guess. Is that enough? No, it's really not, but I'm used to it. And uh, I can't sleep any longer. Uh, what do you, what do you uh, keep in mind mostly? I mean, uh, some of the songs you're going to do or, or, or some of your plans or, or what? What, what? What goes through your mind? Well, uh, everything has happened to me so fast in the last year and a half till... Uh, uh, I'm all mixed up, you know. I mean, I can't keep up with everything that's happening. And, uh... Well, I think that I think that you've you've got very good company. And, and uh, uh, Colonel Tom Parker, he his his feet are on the ground, and I think he's doing a wonderful job of keeping things rolling nicely. You know, uh, I want to uh, uh, give you an opportunity here to go over a lot of the rumors that have been printed about you, including a few that I've printed myself, because some of these things can be checked and some can't. And I think that we ought to sort of fix up the record. Now, your style of gyrating while you sing has been bitterly criticized, even by usually mild and, and gentle uh, TV critics like, like Ben Gross. Now, do you bear any animosity towards these critics? Uh, well, not really. They, those people have a job to do, and they, they do it. And do you think you've learned anything from the criticism leveled at you? No, I haven't. You haven't, huh? Because uh, I, don't, I don't feel that I'm doing anything wrong. Do you read the stuff? Do I read you mean the... The reviews? Mm, not if I can help it. <laughs> do, you, do you keep the scrapbook at all? Uh, only of the good stuff. <laughs> only on the good stuff. That's smart. Tell me, what kind of a teenager were you? Were you, uh, did you consider yourself well-behaved? Uh, yes. Uh, well, I was raised, you know, yeah. in a pretty decent home and everything. My folks always made me behave whether I wanted to or not. Well, how do they feel about your success and, 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 and the things that, that some of the critics have said about you, both good and bad? Well, uh... I guess they're just like myself. They're 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 very thankful for it. I mean, we uh, we always led a kind of a common life. We never had any luxuries, but we were never real hungry, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I guess they're just you know they're real proud, just like I am. Well, now uh, there were, there were two or three columns this week that carried items that you had bought for Cadillacs. Now, what is that of that, Elvis? Mm, it's it's <laughs> It's the truth. I, I do have, I do have full Cadillac. What do you do with four caddies? Well, I, uh, uh <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I haven't gotten any use for four. I just, uh, you know, maybe someday I go broke and I can sell a couple of them. Uh -huh. Well, some people collect stamps and government funds. I guess Cadillacs are probably in the same category. I understand you gave one of them to your folks. Is that right? Well, uh, anything that's mine is theirs. I mean, uh, uh -huh. all four of them is theirs. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm planning for seven. I mean, I, I want seven, uh, you know. You want seven, huh? Yes. <laughs> well, you know what's going to happen. You'll wind up uh, outdoing Kerry. will be the Presley Car Renting Corporation. Yeah, I, 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 I was thinking about the Presley used car lot, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, I understand that you, you bought a home for your folks, and even though your father is only 39, you've insisted that he retire. Is that true? Uh, yes. Well, he's more help, I mean, he's more help at home than he is anywhere else because, uh, he can take care of all my business. He can, uh, you know, he can look at the things when I'm gone. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's I think that's very smart. On your on your personal appearances, you create a sort of mass hysteria uh, amongst your audiences of teenagers. Is your shaking and quaking in the nature of an involuntary response uh, to this hysteria? Uh, would you say that again, sir? Well, I say that when when you shake and you quake when you sing, is that the sort of an involuntary response to the hysteria of your audience? In involuntary? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Well, I'm aware of everything I do at all times, but uh, it's just the way I feel. I mean, for, for example, if, if somebody uh, is, is uh, playing ball, they play just a little bit harder when the fans root. And I was wondering whether this had anything to do with Oh, sure. Uh, 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 well, I guess any artist, uh, if the audience acts like they're enjoying it, if they act like they're with you, well, it makes you put more into it, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you think that your rocking and rolling has had an evil influence on teenagers, or you think it's just an outlet? I don't see that any type of a music would, would have any bad influence on people when it's only a music, I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I can't figure it out. I mean, in a lot of the papers, I say rock and roll was a big influence on juvenile delinquency. I don't think that it is. Uh, juvenile delinquency is something that's, uh, it's, uh, well, it, it's just, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but I don't see how music would have anything to do with it at all. I understand that Mitch Miller of Columbia Records uh, defines rock and roll as a safe form of rebellion against mother, father, and teacher. Do you go along with this analysis? I don't exactly know what he means by rebellion. I mean, uh, how would rock and roll music make anybody rebel against their parents? Well, I guess that answers uh, Mr. Miller. Now, I've got a, a couple of, of questions here I'd like to, to sort of clear up. Uh, one of them, and, and it's sort of a, a silly one to me, uh, after having talked with you at, at, at some length earlier, uh, what about the rumor that you once shot your mother? <laughs> well, I think that one takes the cake. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, that's, that's about the funniest one I've ever heard. Where'd that one come from? Have you any idea? I, I have no idea. I, I can't imagine. When you mention it to me, it's the first time I've ever heard it. Is that right? First time I've ever heard it. Well, there's another one, too, you may not have heard before. Several newspaper stories hinted that you smoked uh, marijuana to hit the bottle in order to work yourself into a frenzy while singing. What about that? <laughs> Uh, you won't even bother answering that one. Well, here's, a, here's a, a one that's very interesting. I don't know whether you noticed a column the other day. They, they predict that uh, uh, Elvis Presley will be another James Dean. Now, have you heard that? Well, I've heard something about it. But uh, I, would, I would never compare myself in any way to James Dean because James Dean was a genius in acting. Mm -hmm. Although I, I, I say that... Uh, that uh, I sure would like to. I mean, I guess there's a lot of actors in Hollywood that would like to have had the, uh, the ability that James Dean had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would never compare myself with James Dean anyway. You know? Now, if you, if you had your choice, would you prefer to be uh, an actor than to be a, uh, a singing entertainer? Uh, if I were a good actor, of course, I'm not a good singer, but uh, if I were a good actor, I think that I would like it a little better. Uh, although, uh, if I ever break into the acting... Uh, completely, I'll still continue uh, my singing. I'll still continue making records. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's always a very, very good sideline. Well, it was just uh, fine talking with you, and I hope that you'll uh, enjoy a, a long career, whether it's uh, acting or anything else. And I think that all of the things said about you, while they've been uh, extremely critical, I think they have helped to make you the kind of a big name that has made it possible for you to do the things for your folks you always wanted to. So I sort of think I'd look at it that way, Elvis. Well, sir, I tell you, uh, uh, you, you know, you, you got to accept the bad along with the good. I've, I've been getting some very, very good publicity. Mm -hmm. The press has been real, real, real wonderful to me, and then I've been getting some bad publicity. But you got to expect that. And uh, I, I know that. I mean, I'm doing the best I can, and uh, I have never turned a reporter down. I never turned a disc jockey down because they're the people that help make in this business. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, as long as I know that I'm doing the best I can, that, that's. No, you can't be expected to do any more. And I want to tell you, it's just been swell talking with you, and you make a lot of sense. Thank you very Give much. Give my best to the Colonel now. Sure will. Bye-bye.